So uh, what I want to talk about today is the first Gideon in the New Testament, okay? The first Gideon in the New Testament. Okay, so let me just explain to you my experience. Uh, I, I joined the Gideons in 1992, so uh, one of the first things they did, wanted me to do was learn how to go and speak in churches. So I prepared, you know, in about a 20-minute because that's they say, well, you usually get to 20 minutes. You ought to be prepared for a 20-minute talk. I go, okay. So I got prepared. I had my whole outline done. I was all ready to go. And I, my first assignment, a church down in Berkeley, or not Berkeley Springs, in uh, uh, Harpers Ferry. Okay, a little Pentecostal church down there. And so I go up and ask the pastor. I said, uh, uh, well, how long do I have? And he says, well, you got the whole service. And I, I said, okay, but how long do I, uh, okay, but when do you quit? He says, oh, well, we quit generally around noon, he says, but if the Spirit's with you, you know, you can go to 1215 or even to 1230. We don't care. Just just keep going, you know. And I go, okay, okay. So anyhow, uh, he gets up and he, he uh says, well, you know, tells her, well, you know, everybody's been here for Sunday school. All the announcements been made. We'll just sing a song. They sang one song. It was quick. And he says, here's Dave Schultz to sing. I looked at the clock. It was five minutes after 11. <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh, my. <laughs> so I spoke, you know, and I even had a couple extra testimonies. And I got finished. When I said the prayer, I looked back up. It was 11.35. <laughs> and the pastor stood up and he says, Well, he says, I was hoping you'd speak a little longer than this. <laughs> he says, But the Lord gave me a story. And that's where I got this story from. He says, Last night the Lord revealed to me of the very first Gideon in the New Testament. And I went, Where is it at? And that's what I want to talk to you today on, the very first Gideon in the New Testament. You can't hear me? Okay. So let me first read. Oh, I forgot to read the scripture. Okay. You don't have to stay. You're already setting, so I forgot to read the scripture. So here, let me read the scripture reading. It's Acts chapter 8, okay, 26 through 40. Okay, and this is where the story is. Acts chapter 8, 26 through 40. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south, unto the way that goeth down to Jerusalem to Gaza, which is the desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said unto him, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should come and guide me? And he desired Philip that he should come and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read, he was led by the sheep to the slaughter. And like a... Lamb dumb before the shear, so opened not his mouth. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who had declared his generation, for his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom thou speakest the prophet this, or of himself, or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. Dost thou hinder me to be baptized? And Philip says, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered, and he says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded that the chariot stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went his way in rejoicing. But Philip found, was found at Azost, 
And passing through, he preached in all the cities when he came to Caesarea. The Ethiopian in charge of the treasury of the queen of the Ethiopians. You know, how did, you know, that was for my first question I asked when I read this. How did he become Jewish? You know, you have this nation of Jewish. Well, there's a reference that, somewhat of a reference in 1 Kings chapter 10, saying that the queen of Sheba came to see Solomon in all of his glory and riches and brought uh, things into him. And when she sat there and she saw his servants and the music players and uh, all the things that he had amassed, his chariots and all that, and his wisdom especially when he spoke to the people, it says that, you know, even the rumors about him were not great enough of all of the things that he had and done. Well, what's not in the Bible, this is, if you want to call it rumor, this is, this is like historians say, this is what happened, was that when uh, she left, you know, it says it's, that Solomon gave her all kinds of gifts and gold and, uh, uh, and that she went home, that she had a child by him, and later this child came and showed the ring that he had given the queen to prove that he was truly from Bathsheba, and he grew up in the courts and learned a lot of about the Jewish uh, uh, faith and took that home with him. That's just one, if you want to call it rumor, it's not in the Bible, per se, but the meeting between Bathsheba, not Bathsheba, between uh, uh, the Queen of Sheba, excuse me, not Bathsheba, the Queen of Sheba, and uh, Solomon is in the Bible, it's in uh, Kings and in uh, Second Chronicles. So, uh, they did become. There's another one that's saying that happened during the exile when when uh, Babylon was was captured Jerusalem that the exiles ran there. So, anyhow, he was a Ethiopian that had come to Jerusalem to worship. Okay, and this it shows you how God works. I think the Lord's. Spirit spoke to Philip and it says go south take the south road to Jerusalem to Gaza okay first of all here's a man in a chariot getting ready to read for God to answer his prayer not only did he have to know what the Ethiopian was going to have a question about he had to send Philip ahead of time because the walk from Jerusalem to the desert takes a while it isn't instantaneous. So ahead of time, God told Philip, start walking to Gaza. Okay? Now, here's a step of faith. Do we have that faith? If God tells us, step out and go someplace. Now, he didn't tell him why he was leaving or what he was leaving for or any of the kids. He says... I, you're in Jerusalem. I want you to take the road south to Gaza through the desert. Philip says, okay, I'm walking along. Okay, and then all of a sudden the Lord said, go talk to that man in the chariot. Okay? And it just happened to be. How could that be? Is it one of these deja vu things or Dave Butler moments or whatever? Did it just happen that that man at that precise moment was reading Isaiah or was God's hand in the whole affair? You know, stepping out in faith, taking that step forward, taking that direction, when you don't know what is down the pathway, that is probably one of the hardest challenges for us Christians to do sometimes. Sometimes we get an unction now, of course, a lot of people become pastors when they say get stepped out in, in faith. They do that. But a lot of us, I know I have a time that so I've heard the, the signal, but I didn't listen to the message. Let me just share one. I did listen a little bit, okay? Every once in a while, every once in a while, the Lord comes along, conks me on the head hard enough that it gets through the sixth skull and uh, listens. You know, uh, we get these, we hand out Bibles and, and uh, 
in churches and uh, not in churches and hotels and motels and uh, about a couple months ago uh, we were you know we stop at them and ask if they need any etc and I always try to carry a couple of uh, those little testaments with me so I just just went in the hotel I think I dropped off four or five Bibles and I was walking out and somebody in the Lord says in the parking lot down there see them people down in the parking lot in that kind of beat up old uh, station wagon go down and offer them a bottle okay here they are sitting in a car at a hotel you know and I'm like you, you know I mean do you walk up to strangers sitting in the car and ask if you can talk to them you know so anyhow I said okay so I walked down and you know they saw me walking to him and he rolled down his window and you know I said hey I'm Dave Schultz with the Gideons and I, I just want to share the, the word of God with you and they looked kind of shocked you know a little bit and I hand them each one and I started to ask them a little bit about their faith you know what do you you know and uh, I could see from the car they weren't very poor they were dressed poorly and didn't have much but they were apparently going through some very difficult times in their life and uh, uh, we talked a little bit about Jesus Christ and how he died for them then I asked if I could pray with them they opened the door and I took both their hands and we prayed and the lady she came to her and she says I feel something I feel something I said that's the Holy Spirit trying talking to you Jesus loves you cares for you you know it's so easy just to keep on walking you know sometimes when God calls you but he doesn't always call me he calls every one of us he has a plan for us to come and share that gospel with someone Philip says do you understand and the Ethiopian says how can I understand he says unless someone will explain it to me and then that's when Philip went and expounded on the Gospels. Isaiah 53 just happened to be reading the perfect Gospel that explains the suffering of Jesus Christ for each and every one of us. How he suffered, bled, and died on that cross and rose again for saving of our sins. And it's amazing that Ethiopian was reading the very scripture that talks of Christ. And it says, Philip explained to him that scripture. Here it is. That Isaiah was written 750 years ahead of when Christ was born. And yet, we see here the perfect description, just like Philip saying, Go. Which is just amazing that he answered his prayer just at the right time when he was there. You know? There's people being called today, okay, that we need to talk to, that at just the right time in their lives, they might be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we can't be afraid to take that step to do it. Oh, sometimes you're going to get rejected and you might get yelled at or whatever. But at least, you're doing the calling of what God did. So Philip explained in the scriptures using the Old Testament saying that every prophet told of the coming of Jesus Christ. In Acts 35 it says Philip told him the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. And the Philips, they said here, here's one I like in this, in this story. It says in 36, and the, and, the, and the eunuch said, you know, there's water. Can I be baptized? 
What was the question? This is the most important question ever asked any of us. In verse 37 it says, and Philip says, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest be baptized, if you believe. And what did the eunuch say? He says, he answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of It, later on he was baptized baptism doesn't save you coming to church doesn't save you taking the elements of the Eucharist that doesn't save you it's only belief in the Lord Jesus Christ that saves you Jesus said in John 4 35 I tell you to open your eyes and look at the fields they are ripe for the harvest then in John 4 38 he says I send you to reap what you have not worked for I send you you know, you look around and open your hearts and you share the gospel. Look around this nation. Are there people around us that don't have a clue about Jesus Christ? You know, Abraham Lincoln said this quote. He said, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because... We've destroyed ourselves. The good news, I think, is the only news that's going to be the saving grace of our country. Our values, our hopes, our dreams, our freedom is all tied to the morality that's intertwined within our society that comes from what the Bible has given us. And we lose that, we will no longer have a moral basis for which any judgment is made, and we will lose our country because we have given it away. But what it takes is each of us to stand up for righteousness Pew Research in 2019 says 65% of American adults describe themselves as Christians. 45% say they go to church once a month or maybe more. I understand that it's much less than that for the younger generation, for millennials and for Generation X and what all the other generations are in between. It's, it's down to, some say, out of the total population, only 17% attend church regularly. Jesus' answer, though, is share the good news. First Peter 3.15 says this, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that is in you. But do it with gentleness and respect. 